So obviously, you don't believe Madeleine McCann was abducted, do you? Absolutely not. I'm. The problem is with the abduction theory, is that if you actually ask what shred of evidence exists that Madeleine was abducted, even the people who believe in that theory can't come up with anything except to say she disappeared. Well, a disappearance does not mean an abduction. It means the child left the area in some fashion. It doesn't, it doesn't si signify abduction. And usually when you have an abduction, you have evidence of that. And in this case, there actually is zero evidence. And, and when I was watching the Netflix uh, uh, documentary on Madeleine McCann, they made a point twice in the show to say, well, you know, it must be a very clever, and I'm paraphrasing here, it must be a very clever pedophile gang because they had such a small window of opportunity to take her and they left no evidence. So they must have been brilliant. I'm like, well, maybe it just didn't happen. <laughs> maybe that's the yeah. real answer. So there is no evidence of abduction. Could it have happened? It's possible. But there's no evidence of it. And you can't base a case on and say this is what happened when you have no evidence that it did occur. So, so then if she wasn't abducted, then what do you believe happened to Madeline? Well, I, again, I can't say she wasn't abducted. I, you, know, that, you know, that would be something that has to be taken to court okay. to prove. I can't say she wasn't abducted. What I can say is there's no evidence of an abduction. What we do have evidence is that there's no evidence of an abduction. That's evidence in itself, that there's no evidence of an abduction. If somebody, right. there's no evidence anybody from the outside somehow broke into the apartment. There's no evidence of a break-in. There is no, there are no fingerprints of a stranger there. There's no DNA of a stranger there. There's no footprints in, outside the window in the dirt where somebody might have, you know, been standing. There's no dirt on the windowsill. There's simply no evidence anybody was in there, including the fact that Nothing pretty much was moved or taken, so nobody was scrambling around or fighting with a child or uh, felt, you know, came through the window and stepped onto the bed and, you know, something happened with, you know, you could see some disturbance there. There's simply no evidence that anybody came in from the outside. So then we look at, all right, so there's no evidence that anybody came in from the outside. What evidence do we have at all in this case? And we do have, the evidence we have, there's, there's the there is behavioral evidence, which is 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 quite a large amount of behavioral evidence in this case. And behavioral evidence isn't nothing; it's still something that is it gives us information. Uh, and then, of course, when you have evidence, you and you have to analyze that evidence and decide what that evidence means. So it's not necessarily absolutely clear when you say, "Oh, this is this is a piece of evidence." For example, let's say. Uh, let's say we found that there was a, a footprint in the flower bed outside the window. That's a piece of evidence. But then you have to analyze that evidence. Was that footprint even related to this crime? In other words, did somebody actually leave the footprint climbing in the window or climbing out? Or did somebody just come by and stand there? Or did one of the parents check the window out later and stand there and leave a footprint? So it's evidence, but then you have to analyze what that evidence means. So there's a lot of behavioral evidence in this case. And then there's what we would call the dog evidence and then the DNA evidence. And the dog evidence um, is very strong in this case. The DNA evidence, there's a question over whether it was properly analyzed. And that's still up in the air because of the analysis issue. Right, yeah. With, with, with the dogs, people would say that because they could detect blood from many times before and then maybe it was from someone before the McCann's stayed there. So, um, but then you have obviously they they looked at the car and the clothes as well, didn't they? Yeah. So the thing about, that's so strong about the dog evidence is that uh, when Martin Grimes came in with his two dogs, the cadaver dog and the blood dog, who alert to different things, both dogs did alert in the apartment. They didn't alert in another apartment, which is always really important to know. It's like, oh, well, maybe the, if they were just dogs that alerted everywhere, then. How, how important would this be? It wouldn't. In other words, if you took them to 10 different apartments and they, they alerted in all these uh, apartments and, or what you call in the UK flats, um, then it wouldn't be meaningless. You have a bunch of idiot dogs. But the dogs only alerted in, in this particular vacation flat. So you have 
a cadaver dog that alerted in the flat. You have a blood dog that alerted in the flat. And then they took the dogs to a location where there were a bunch of cars. Again, a bunch of cars, not just one car, a bunch of cars. And the dogs alerted at the McCann's car only. So that's a fascinating thing. That's And the dogs are very, they're, they're, they have been proven to be very, very reliable dogs. So the fact that these dogs would alert in the apartment, alert at the cars, and alert to some items uh, that they had laid out on the ground to a shirt, a shirt of Kate's and then the cuddle, little cuddle, uh, cuddle cat that that was popular with Madeline. She used to carry around. So those things, that, that is a lot of evidence. Now, people say, well, it doesn't matter because the dogs, you can't prove, you take those dogs to court and say it's absolute. And that's correct. You can't do that. So that's why you can't say, okay, this case is solved. Let's take the McCann's to court. Let's arrest them. Let's prosecute them based entirely on the dogs hitting in their, uh, you know, in their, in their flat and in, on their vehicle. You can't do that. But what it does do is lead you to say, that's very, very interesting. It's very uh, unique that these dogs are, are, have actually hit on these locations, which tells us a story. And that's where we've been able to build um, both Gonzalo Amaral and I believe similarly uh, about the child coming to an accident in the, the vacation flat while the McCanns were out. That's our that's our theory based on behavioral evidence and the uh, dog evidence. Um, is it enough to go to court? No, it isn't quite enough to go to court. And that's why, you know, essentially the Portuguese police did not arrest the McCanns. Uh, they eventually just had to shelve the case because McCann's left the country, but they were trying to get the rest of the evidence. And that's what you do in any kind of criminal case. You know, if you start with, for example, a homicide scene, you might get a certain piece of evidence and then you say, wait a minute, let's see if we can get more evidence. And eventually that evidence leads you to the home of somebody. And then in that home, you find blood evidence that matches the scene. And you say, aha, now we've got you because we have enough evidence we think that we can get a conviction in court right so so obviously your conclusion uh, obviously the amaral was the lead detective on the case at the time wasn't it in portugal and then he released his book the truth of the lie so if you and his conclusions are the same i'm not too sure on where like where do you think the mccann's firstly why did they want to cover it up and secondly where is madeline basically well those are two very good questions. Uh, why they would want to cover it up. And I actually can, you know, I, I can see exactly why they would want to cover it up. I understand that if if the theory that Gonzalo Amaral and I have is accurate, there would be uh, a great deal of stress at the time. Both of us believe that Maddie was probably given some kind of medication that caused her to be sleepy uh, and when the, she was left unattended with her, with her two, with her siblings in the, the vacation flat and the McCann's went out to hang out with her friends that she may have got staggered out of the bedroom, got up on the sofa looking for her parents out the window and, and cl fell behind the sofa and died behind the sofa, possibly as, um, um, positional asphyxia landing in a funny position to cut off her airway. Uh, or something, you know, there was blood behind the sofa too. Could she have hit her head? Something went wrong there. We don't have an absolute because we, you know, we can't prove that, but we both believe she fell behind the sofa. Um, and let's assume this did happen. And you come back to your uh, flat to check on the children. And you're like, where the heck happened to Maddie? And then you look behind the sofa and there she is. And she's dead. And she's not alive. She's dead. It's not like you can call you know, call for emergency help and save her life. She's dead. And you're sitting there going, oh my God, what am I going to do? We neglected the children. We left the children unattended. And, and we gave her medicine on top of it. So this is going to become a criminal case. There's no doubt. They're smart enough people, the McCanns, to know this will become a criminal case. And then they have a decision to make. They could call the police and say, look, we came back and found our child dead. Yes, we weren't there. Yes, we gave her medicine. And they could take their chances with the Portuguese legal system and perhaps end up in prison for a number of years. And in doing so, not only do they end up in prison, but they may lose custody of their children, you know, because they, first of all, neglected them. And secondly, they're not able to care for them. Uh, so the children, in other words, their lives would be destroyed along with their careers as well. So they basically, 
it it would have done them in. I mean, that would be a terrible, terrible thing that would have destroyed their, their lives. Now, if a person at that moment thinks, there's nothing I can do, my child is dead, there's nothing I can do to bring her back, but I can save myself, I can save my wife, I can save my kids, my other kids, I can save what we do have. Let me just see if I can get her body out of the apartment, hide it someplace, and then hopefully they'll think somebody kidnapped her and they'll start looking for the, the boogeyman that doesn't exist, but they'll look for the stranger that, that took the child and we, we can at least have the rest, you know, save our, save our family and save our careers. That's what, that would be the reasoning behind why you would do something like this. So it's not impossible that somebody would choose to do this at all. I mean, it's, you know, it's been done more than one time in the history of uh, parenting uh, where somebody has, sort of messed up either they've hit their child and they didn't mean to hit the child so hard or they or the child got into some kind of you know came to their uh, deaths through the neglect or abuse of their parents and then their parents tried to cover it up so then in that case where would madeline be is there any evidence that yeah i forgot the, i forgot the le- second part of your question the, <laughs> no, where, this one. the where is the very difficult part because obviously it's been uh, 10 years now and her body has not been located some people would say, well, that's, an, that's some evidence that maybe she was abducted because then maybe somebody's keeping her hidden in the basement of their house or maybe they abducted her but then took her out of the country and killed her and she's somewhere in the ocean. You know, we don't know where she is. Well, that's true. That, that, that could have happened. But it also is possible that the parents did remove her body from the, from the flat in the car that the dogs hit on. Now, not, not that day because they didn't have the car yet. Um, they they did they got the hire car late much later, but it is possible that they the body was removed from the apartment um, and they found a place to hide her at least that was good enough that the body was not discovered for a period of time and then it is also possible that at a certain point when they realized there'd be more thorough searches done that the body might be found and if they had the opportunity because they had a hire car now they could then go where that body was put and, and, and put it in the car and take it to some place they felt she would never be found. Um, I went to Portugal. I was in Praia de Luz. And I found two places I personally thought were very, very interesting. One was these crevices in the cliff uh, nearby where you can access it from the beach. You can access these locations very quickly. And you could carry a body down the beach and, and just go up into these crevices and you could put the body in it's it's basically kind of a uh, rocky sandy dirt that's in these crevices you could put put a body maybe put the baby the child you know in in there and then cover the child up and and the body would stay there until you decided to pull up in your hire hire car a few weeks later and then just walk around the corner go back up on that little uh, into the cliffs it's not a very far walk it's hard to imagine if you're not there but i could if i were going to move the body at that point I could park a vehicle. There's a little parking lot right there. I could park a vehicle, just get out of the vehicle, go jump, take a few steps onto the beach and up into the crevice and remove the body and put it in the car. That is a theory I have. And there's a location outside of Praia de Luz to the, um, to the west, which is a very short t- part out of town, uh, where it is a desolate area, very desolate. You can drive back there in a car and you could, you could, you could, make a permanent grave back there and be unless somebody's going to go in there and build a housing collection and then dig up the land and just accidentally find her body probably her body would never be found now De- detective Amaral had a different theory he thought her body was kept somewhere in a freezer for a while and then was moved someplace he doesn't know where the end result would be i haven't found strong evidence that her body was put in a freezer so but so this this is these we each have a theory on that, but until a body is found, uh, if ever, I don't think we'll have any proof of one theory or the other. But uh, still, there's no theory, there's there's still the evidence is very strong, is supporting that the the child was met an accident in the vacation flat and her body was moved and there was no abductor. There's that's what the evidence still supports in my opinion. Yeah. So. These these are the conclusions you came to in your in your book, the profile of the dis- disappearance of Madeleine McCann, and yes. um, 
I think the oh, most sure. important thing I have to point out, because I, I go over and over this, how this is the key to the case. There's so many pieces of evidence. Uh, you can't really get into them in a short period of time as far as behavioral evidence goes. Uh, for example, in the in the flat, how, how many people were coming, going in the flat? What the what the McCann said first, Jerry McCann said he came in the front door and later he said he came in the back door. So he changed his story a number of times. Kate said the the. The uh, window was the, the was broke. They were the window was broken into, uh, and that, that's not true. The window was never broken into. So their stories didn't match evidence, and their stories changed. So you could you could have a huge list of odd behaviors from the McCanns and stories that don't hold water and stories that didn't remain the same. There's a lot of those stories, but I keep coming back to the one very 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 clear red flag in this case and that is the smith sighting uh the smith sighting is there were two sightings the night that madeline went missing one is called tanner man or the tanner sighting a uh, man seen by jane tanner approximately around 9 15 and then there's the smith sighting and that was a man seen with a child was carrying this child pretty much the same way we hear about in the tanner sighting just a little girl in his arms it was seen yeah. by the smith family as they came out of a restaurant around 10 o'clock uh, the, the Tanner sighting, Jane Tanner claimed she was coming up the street and, and Jerry was standing there with Jez, a fr another friend chatting and she walked by them. And as she was walking by them, she saw this man crossing the street from the McCann's apartment, carrying a little girl in his arms. What's odd about this whole story is that Jerry and Jez never saw her on that street, which is pretty peculiar considering it's a very, very narrow street and it's very quiet at night. There's just no way. She could have walked by them without them knowing. Uh, and so, in my opinion, this is Jerry's alibi, because if that was the man carrying the child away, Jerry was on the street talking to his friend. He has an alibi, and that, therefore it would be an abduction. However, that, it, that the, the Scotland Yard eventually discounted that sighting, saying it was a, another uh, parent in town bringing his child back from the crash. I don't particularly think that story makes sense because he was kind of going the wrong direction. So I'm not sure that I believe that story. I don't know why Scotland Yard says it's true, but I, I don't buy it. But the other sighting is where it's interesting. The Smith sighting was late, later, near 10 o'clock, and they saw a man carrying a little girl from the direction of the McCann's flat toward the beach, which is where I think her body was buried in, in the early, in the first night. Now, there, this is ten, this is a whole family who saw this man carrying a child. So this is there's no question that this this exciting exi existed in my opinion. But here's the reason it's very interesting. The McCanns paid a tremendous amount of attention to the Tanner sighting, and they pretty much ignored the Smith sighting. They did not want to talk about the Smith Smith sighting. They didn't push the the composite from the Smith sighting, which by the way looks tremendously like Jerry. Um, they they really just try to try to basically cover that sighting up and not let the public hear much about it. And here's what you have to ask. If your child was you really kidnapped on that night, if your child really was abducted and a whole family saw a man carrying a little girl, a limp little girl away from your apartment. Then you should be all over this. This should be pushed to the public like crazy even if you thought the tanner sighting might be true you would still push the other one because that might be the man who's carrying your child away you wouldn't want to give up any possibility anybody ignoring that you'd say hey you know who else saw this um you know did you notice anything strange around here or here you know did you notice somebody missing from your 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 apartment at 10 o'clock that night you know do you know of some strange guy who lives at your place who disappeared at that time of night and would be on that street you know you would want everybody to pay attention to the smith sighting because this sighting might be the key to finding your daughter but the mccann's were not interested in that sighting and you just have to say to yourself this makes no sense i've never seen a parent of a missing child they they they're there's they, a parent of a missing child will think everybody took their child you know they anybody even something it's totally ridiculous you know like the pope was in the area so I, the pope could have taken my child and you're like no the pope didn't take a child <laughs> but they want everybody checked out everybody checked out everybody to them is the guy who did it for the McCanns they had an actual man seen taking a little girl away from their apartment area their, their apartment and they were not interested 
and did not promote that sighting. It makes no sense unless, may, unless there is a possibility that the man seen by the Smith family was Jerry McCann carrying his own daughter away from the vacation flat. That is what, one of the biggest, you know, to me, the biggest key to this case. It's interesting that you say that, actually, because in the Netflix documentary, they use the Jane sighting as, like, in the first episode, as the main sort of supporting evidence in the whole thing, really. And they yes. even show footage of her crying as well. So, yes. They, you know, they, 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 that's just amazing when you think about it, because, again, this would be another opportunity for the McCanns to make sure that information got out to the public. I mean, this is Netflix. You know how many people watch Netflix? The McCanns should be thrilled that Netflix was doing a show on them and, and would show the Smith sighting. But that's not true. Now, by the way, a lot of people think that the McCanns were upset about the Netflix. They said, oh, you know, we, we don't think this should be done because there's an ongoing investigation, which, again, is one of their very strange stories. Really? There's been an ongoing investigation for 10 years, first of all, and you've been all over the television for 10 years. You've been in other documentaries. Don't tell me that this is going to destroy the investigation. It's insanity. And, you know, and you always saying you want the message to get out about Madeline. You want her photo to get out. And you're going to say you don't want Netflix to do this? That's rubbish. I mean, that is absolute nonsense. The reason I think they said that is they wanted to make it look like the Netflix documentary was objective and they had nothing to do with it. Yet, oddly enough, all their people show up in it. Exactly. I mean, these are people who they've worked with. Don't you think those people if, would go to the McCanns and say, hey, do you want me to be in this documentary? And they'd say, no, don't do it. But no, they all show up in the documentary. I'm, I'm going to guess with their blessing. So I believe that I believe they had a lot of a hand in this documentary, which, again, would be why we do not see much about the Smith sighting, because it seems the McCanns are not interested in promoting that sighting to this day. You don't really see much about anything against them, really. They're all treated as like conspiracy theories. And, and then they even attempt to debunk a lot of the evidence, like the dogs, for example. Yes, it was a it was a it was a very well well, it's kind of boring. Actually, people think the thing was boring, uh, which it was. I think it um, was, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of a snooze fest, yeah. So, you know, Netflix isn't always concerned about the truth. Netflix is concerned about making money. And there's one very important thing that's true about uh, doing anything that criticizes the McCanns or suggests they could be involved in the disappearance of their daughter Maddie is that you're probably looking at a lawsuit because they sue everybody. I've been... I had my book pulled off the market. The disappearance of Madeleine McCann was pulled off the market, off of, the, off of Amazon, because Amazon was threatened with a libel suit by the McCann's lawyers. And now the McCann's never pointed out what that, what was libelous about the book. There was never any information that, oh, this is where she libeled us, uh, because there was no libel in the book. But Mc, the, Amazon's like, yeah, this isn't worth it. This isn't worth dealing with. So they just pulled the book off the market because it was easier for them uh, and financially smarter. Um, but that's what the McCanns do. So for Netflix, if they they'd probably rather not get in trouble with the McCanns, so they might as well go with the abduction theory and and then then the I, I say I think they had some hand in it because it, it definitely it skirted all the true. They they left out. Let's put it this way: they left out a whole bunch of information that would yeah. support that the child died in that apartment. What they did do cleverly, though, <clears throat> they knew there were going to be two, couple a few issues which anybody watching the show who knows anything about this case is going to say, but you didn't present this. One was their behavior, two were the dogs, and three was the DNA evidence. So what they did very cleverly is in the first four episodes, they first got, got you to like the McCanns. And, if, and, and for their odd behaviors, uh, like Jerry's, uh, Jerry's odd behavior, they had somebody say something like, well, when I first met him, I didn't really like him. But then... I grew to like the guy. And then I realized he was a grieving parent. Then I realized he was innocent. So they started off allowing you to have that emotion about the McCanns. But then they, they, they said, oh, no, no. You know, if you only knew them better, you would, you would not feel this way. Because that's what happened to me. I went through that journey. So that's one of the things. Let's explain away the McCanns' behaviors. Then they, before, uh, I think it was in uh, part four and five, they built this up like, okay, now we're going to tell you what the evidence is that people keep saying is out there. It's the dog. Look at the dogs. They actually showed the whole clips of the dogs, which I thought was kind of good. And then they, t they said, and then they found some DNA evidence. Woo! 
But you see, this is done halfway through the film. Like, this is, you know, it, it, I always relate this to a Bollywood film. I don't know if you've ever watched one from India. But they have an interval in the middle of the film. And so what happens is you, you start the film out by getting to like the protagonists. And then something terrible happens right before the interval. And you go, oh, no. And then they say, interval. And you go get some food and, and something to drink. Then you come back after interval. And then they deal with the horrible thing that happened before the interval. And eventually it's all solved and there's a happy ending. Well, yeah, right. this, is what they, this is what they did here. Right before the, on the fourth and fifth, right in the middle, let's present this scary evidence. And then on the sixth, seventh, and eighth, they go, oh, no. You know, we can, we can show you how you were just, you were worried for no reason. Those dogs are idiots. The DNA wasn't, wasn't conclusive, so it didn't prove a darn thing. And those, those McCanns are, are still behaving okay. So then they just discredited everything. And then happy ending. You know, Madeline might still be out there. We still might find her. And then they gave the most ludicrous story on that, too, at the end. They said, well, you know, we, people have, have, children have reappeared after being missing for years, like, uh, I think they use Elizabeth Smart. Um, Elizabeth Smart disappeared, and she was found years lady, later. Jesse Dugard, I don't believe they mentioned Jesse, but Jesse Dugard's another child that went missing and was found years later. But here's what they don't tell you. Those were teenagers. When, mm -hmm. you know, when, a, when, a, when a pedophile takes a, a teenager, or at least a 10 or 12-year-old, you can control that child, and you can make them do what you want, and, and you can move. They, it's not as hard to handle them. But anybody who takes a three-year-old child, hey, if anybody has a three-year-old child, you know how much of a pain in the butt they can be. And then they cry a lot. And then they have bathroom issues. And, other, you know, there's all kinds of issues this little child has. I mean, most people, you know, don't want to babysit a three-year-old child, must, much less get stuck with them, one of those for years. You know, so most of the time when a three-year-old goes missing, they're, found, they're dead within the hour. They're, they're, they're uh, sexually assaulted and then they're murdered within the hour because they're too much to deal with. So they they came up with this. Oh yeah, see these kids have reappeared. Yeah, okay, but this is not this is not that kind of case that she would reappear. And, you know, and in the long run, this whole documentary never dealt with the fact that there wasn't evidence of an abduction, except to say, well, because there wasn't, that proves it must be a clever sex gang who who planned this so carefully. Uh, the other thing they never really explained is why they would take Madeline. Um, Somebody said because she, she'd get a really high price. Why? Because she was blonde? Because there's a lot of kids, you could, little girls you can kidnap who are blonde, and they don't have to be taken out of somebody's apartment of two British doctors on vacation. You can just find somebody, some kid whose parents are drug addicts or something, and, you know, and just take them, and then it won't be a big deal, you know, as big, big a police deal. It won't be an international incident. I mean, it, it's not like you can't find another little girl looks like Madeline if somebody really wanted one that looked like that. So they, they really had no explanation. They had no new, and the, 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 the documentary really didn't come up with any new great leads. Uh, all they basically said was, it's probably a clever child sex ring. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, it was all nonsense. But yeah. they, they, they refused. They, there is so much evidence. Anybody who spent any time on this case knows there's a tremendous amount of behavioral evidence uh, connected to this case. And there is simply not one shred of evidence that even supports abduction. And you have to ask yourself, Scotland Yard has been looking at this case for a very long time now. They're supposed to be a premier agency, right? But they've come up with zero, zero. And I believe the reason is, is because they were given a remit before they even started looking at this case that says the McCanns are off the table. We're looking at this as an, an abduction. And that right away, I just, I said, what the heck? Is this some political thing? Because... I, I've worked cold cases, and when I work, went into the police department to work on a case, I didn't let them tell me what I should be looking at, or tell me what the motive was, or tell me what happened. They don't, I, they don't get to tell me that. I get the information, I start analyzing it, and I determine what the cause of death was, what the manner of death was, and what I think happened. I do that, and I don't let them say, oh, this is what happened. No, that's, you know, keep your opinions to yourself. I'm starting at the beginning because I'm, in, I'm analyzing. So Scotland Yard should have started with an open slate completely from the beginning and said, okay, we're starting with, let's reanalyze everything. But they didn't. They started with a remit that said, you're going to look at this as an abduction. So don't, the McCann's are off the table. Don't look at anything else. Just look for somebody who took this child, even though there's zero evidence of an abduction. Well, yeah, exactly. Because if you're going to investigate 
Madeline being abducted and she wasn't abducted, then you're going to go nowhere in 11 years, aren't you? Well, I mean, you, you, if you're if you're investigating something that didn't happen, <laughs> you're not going to yeah, come exactly. up with anything. You know, I mean, you can you can try all you want, but you're not going to come up with anything. That's why sometimes we'll say something like, let's say somebody came and accused me tomorrow. They said, look, this child was murdered, you know, a mile from your house. And we saw a car that looked like yours in the area. We think you might have had something to do with this. I'm like, all right, go check my car out. Go check my house out. Good luck. Because since I was nowhere near that child, you cannot find anything in my car in my house. You're going to get zero because I wasn't involved. You're just going to come up with nothing. So if an abduction never occurred, you can look at every squirrely person in, in Portugal which, which Scotland Yard did. It's like, oh, it's this guy, it's this guy, it's this guy. And it came up with nothing because there was no evidence even, you know, linking anybody to this crime and there was no evidence of an abduction. But when you look over toward the McCann's camp, oddly enough, that's where all the evidence is, all the behavioral mm-hmm. evidence, all the, the, the dog evidence, the DNA evidence, just all the evidence that does exist is over toward the McCann's. Every bit of evidence that does exist supports that, that Madeline died in that apartment and her body was moved. That's what all the evidence supports. It's not provable in a case, uh, court of law because it's not strong enough because they, need, they would need a little bit more to go to court. But that's where all the evidence is. And that's what the evidence supports that Madeline died in the apartment and her body was moved.